Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We're going to be making a very complicated subject, hopefully not so complicated this afternoon. Um, my name's Nick Hodgson. I'm, I'm a chiropractor, as some of you have already worked out. So some of you may be thinking, well, what the, you know, what are you doing talking about the brain? So hopefully as we go through the talk, you'll understand why I'm going to talk about the brain. Um, but this is, this is a part of a program that I teach to chiropractors and, and to community people. So this is part of a 15-hour training program, so we're not going to have a 15-hour talk today, much to your, your relief. But, but as I said, hopefully we're going to make the brain simple for you so you can understand how to improve the way that your brain works, whatever it may be that's not quite working too well with your particular brain. Um, so we're going to be talking about a thing called the brain reward cascade, which is literally kind of like chemistry. You know, who loved doing chemistry back at school? <laughs> one hand, <laughs> one hand out of, out of many. So, um, so yeah, we're going to be really talking about the, the way the chemistry in your brain works and the way that influences the way that you think, feel, um, and function. And we're going to be talking about something called reward deficiency syndrome, which is what happens when something goes wrong with the brain reward cascade. So in terms of what this brain reward cascade is, basically this is based on a paradigm shifting research that came out in about 2001. It was like the culmination of a, of a bunch of research that was done trying to figure out the chemistry and, and the biochemistry of the human brain. And it was basically all summarised in a, in a 400 page feature of the Journal of Psychoactive Drugs. Now, the Journal of Psychoactive Drugs, what do you reckon is normally in that particular scientific journal? Psychoactive drugs, what are you thinking of? Drugs. Drugs, yeah. <laughs> That's hard, but psychoactive is, is brain drugs. So usually the Journal of Psychoactive Drugs is where they, you know, Prozac and, and Valium and even Viagra was first kind of published in this journal. This is where they release all of the, the latest research in terms of, of, of brain chemistry and brain drugs. So it was a bit of a, a shift that they would actually publish an entire edition on, on, on new chemistry and how you can actually influence this chemistry naturally. Um, so what it's about is, is, is providing us a better understanding of our ability to achieve a thing called a state of well-being. Now, if you're wondering what a state of well-being is, who here has got a dog or, or a cat as a pet? Who's ever had a, pet, a dog come up to them and you... You know there's this little spot, you know, around about here and you just start scratching them behind their eye, behind their ear, and what happens to their face? It sort of goes, oh, you know, the, the eyes start to glaze over, a little smile comes on the face. So that's what well-being is. Well-being is, is when you're literally feeling content, relaxed, you know, focused, um, loved, etc., etc. So our feelings, you know, the way we're feeling right now, and when we talk about feelings, we're not just talking about I'm happy, I'm sad. We're literally talking about your ability to, you know, feel what's happening around you and feel what's happening inside of you. It's all mediated in, in what's called the limbic system, which is basically a specific part of your brain. And, and it's basically expressed through a cascade of chemicals. So you know a waterfall, as the water flows down and eventually gets to the bottom, or, or a chain reaction of chemicals, like one chemical leads to another chemical, leads to another chemical, leads to another chemical. So that's what we mean, mean about a, a reward cascade. So we know that in your nervous system, when you achieve well-being, when you get that, ah, oh, I feel good, I feel happy, I can concentrate, I can focus, then you literally have got specific you know, chain reactions going on in your nervous system. So a number of those chemicals that are in your brain are all related to this thing called the state of well-being, which we, we talked about. So there's been 86 neurotransmitters. So the neurotransmitters are the chemicals in your brain, okay? They're the things that make your nervous system work. So there's 86 of those um, isolated so far. Now, now the... The flow of these chemicals is dependent on the, the, the frequency of your nervous system. So you know when you've got the radio and you're trying to find 93.9 Bay FM and but you're on 93.7, you know, what do you get? Scared. 
you know, and then you get 93.8 and you start to hear a little bit of sound and you hit 93.9, all of a sudden you hear music and voices. Your nervous system is like that. It, it works at different frequencies. So when your nervous system is working at a particular you know, channel, then you will be getting particular chemicals running down through your nervous system. So when we talk about frequency, we're not talking about an action potential. If you've done any sort of study in terms of where the nerves work, like when you learn basic nerves, you, you learn about, you know, if you, you hit this, then that goes like that, or if you, you know, stimulate a nerve, then a muscle kind of contracts. That's like an action potential. That's like a little bolt of energy going down through the nervous system to make something happen. Frequency is more about the resting activity of your nervous system. So when your car is sitting at the traffic lights, it's not turned off, you know, it's still actually idling at a particular speed. Your nervous system is the same, it's always working at a particular energy level. And then, depending on what you're doing, it goes faster, slower, you know, it responds to what what's needs to be done. So the thing we need to remember is that the nerve system controls and regulates every cell in every body. So every little cell, every little part of your body is being run, coordinated, regulated, sped up, slowed down, switched on, turned off by your nervous system. Nothing basically happens unless the nervous system tells it to do it. So what's the connection between the mind, you know, this thing up here in our skull, and the rest of our body? How, how do we connect those two things together? So what we know now is that the interface, the connection between these two things is your, is your biochemistry. It's those neurotransmitters. It's the, it's the chemistry of the nervous system that, that links it all up. So it's almost like these transmitters are the, the words or the vocabulary. It's like the language that your nervous system uses to communicate with every cell in, in the body. So when we sell it, say that the nervous system controls every cell in every body, there's a problem with that because we don't have nerves going to every cell in every body. Like there's not little electric wires attaching them to them. But we do have neurotransmitters flowing through our entire body. So every cell gets touched by these chemicals. So that's how our brain tells our you know, cells, our liver cells, our... our um, immune cells to do what they, it wants them to do. So this thing here is basically what we call the brain reward cascade. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, obviously, because you don't really need to know. The main thing you need to look at when you're looking at this chart is, can you see the little boxes that say reward? That's, that's payday. You know, when you get reward, it's like, aha, I'm happy, I feel good, everything's going well. So it's like a Malways map. You know, if you're in Belmont and you need to get to Geelong, then you know you need to turn down High Street, you need to go up you know, Mallop Street or whatever. You, need, you know you need to turn left, right, left, right. And chemistry is the same in your body. So up the top of the chart is a thing called serotonin. Has anyone heard of, of the word serotonin? It stuns me nowadays how everybody has heard of the word serotonin. Five years ago, ten years ago, um, you know, if I mentioned serotonin to people, they'd be like, what the... But, but it's very common now. So that travels down through a particular part of your brain, turns left, you know, turns right, turns into dopamine. Has everyone heard of dopamine? Um, dopamine's another, um, you know, particular chemical. Travels down into the brain and comes out and produces reward. So, so serotonin's good because that's part of the, the cascade. Dopamine is good. If you look on the left there, there's a thing called GABA. GABA reduces serotonin. It's like it blocks it. You know when you get to a traffic light and it's a really busy intersection and it's like you're waiting for the lights to change because you've got a red signal? That's what GABA's like. It kind of stops the serotonin from getting there. So you might be thinking, okay, so now I need an operation to remove the GABA from my brain so that I get lots of dopamine. Don't jump to those sort of conclusions straight away. You can also see that dopamine turns right, heads down, and also comes out at, at, at GABA again, at, at the reward. But you can see that GABA inhibits it, it, it messes it up again. Down the bottom, we've got a different pathway called, you know, another reward pathway. So we've got norepinephrine, and I bet none of you have heard of norepinephrine. Um, but that basically runs through and again produces a reward. Now you can see, can you see how GABA's there again? GABA actually releases norepinephrine and produces reward. 
So imagine you just had that operation to get rid of all your GABA. What have you just done? You've also mucked up one of your other pathways of producing a ward. So the, the bottom line to all of this is that particular chemicals lead to different things and there's negative feedback mechanisms, me mechanisms in there. And we'll look at why that is in, in a second. So let's look at some of these characters.